Hello all, it's the 13th of February 2018, you're here with Dan in Essex UK in the Polytunnel. So the time of year has come where which I'm starting to think about grafting apples. Now I've done this in the past with about an 80% success rate, so I was very happy about that. And I've got a lot of information off of the Stephen Hayes Fruitwise YouTube channel, so I suggest you check that one out if um, you enjoy watching my channel, etc. A lot of the grafting knowledge and indeed a lot of inspiration I got from his channel. Um, I like the way that he puts things over, he explains things well, and he also talks about his mistakes and ways in which you can avoid making mistakes, and also he talks about things he's done well and gives that information over in a very good way. So check that one out, Stephen Hayes Fruitwise. Just put that into YouTube and you'll see his caricature come up, like a sort of a picture of a man drew in pencil, I believe it is, with a beard. That's what it is. Okay, so with regards to grafting, now the purpose of grafting is to be able to continue growing the same variety of apples onto another rootstock. For example, if you manage to grow an apple from a seed that you find within an apple after you've eaten it, for example, the chances are it won't grow to type. So let's say, for argument's sake, you eat an apple and it is the variety Gala. You know, nearly everybody knows Gala because, or Royal Gala, whatever, because it's very available in the, so in the shops, in the supermarket, etc. So if you manage to grow a Gala apple seed, the chances are it will not be a Gala apple. Something else could come up. So what you do is you graft a scion, which is a piece of last year's growth from a gala tree onto another apple tree or part of an apple tree, and then the gala will continue. So that's how apples in many ways are propagated these days. Now, with regards to doing this, you want to get yourself a nice grafting kit. And I've got a little grafting kit here. I sort of built it up again with a lot of advice from the Stephen Hayes Fruitwise. YouTube channel, but I like to keep it all together. So let's have a look at what I've got here. Okay, so you can see from looking at that, I've got some information. So this is a very good book I found. It's called Grafting Fruit Trees by Larry Southwick. So if we just turn into a few of the pages, we can see the sort of thing that it's got. So Grafting Fruit Trees, and that's what you've got there, look, with regards to the contents. Introduction, definition of terms, tools for grafting, wound dressing, why graft, types of grafts, when to graft or bud, and source of cyan and bud wood, cleft grafting, bark graft, inlay graft, also called veneer and rind, bridge graft, in arch graft, whip or tongue graft, stub graft, oblique side graft, budding, 10 essentials of successful grafting and budding, and 10 most asked questions about grafting. Now I find this just a very good book indeed. I like the way it's sort of got an old fashioned layout. I don't know when it was first published. Maybe it says in the front. Let's have a look. Printed in the United States, 1979 by Story Publishing. But either way, this is a very good book. So, Grafting Fruit Trees by Larry Southwick. Now, with regards to knives, you want to be using a relatively sharp grafting knife because you're going to have to make cuts, okay? And this is the knife I like to use, recommended by Stephen Hayes himself. It's the Openal 6 French grafting knife, or oh, I don't even know if it's a specific grafting knife, but it's a knife for you know, various uses. I heard people have used these for fishing purposes, so let's have a look at it. Now you've got to be really careful doing this. I managed to cut my finger with one of these a few years, and man, did it bleed. So, let's get that up. There you go, have a look at that. Now, you can purchase these for, I believe they're about I got this off the internet, I think, between the region of seven and nine pounds. So I think that's good. Had these for a few years. You want to keep it sharp, but just be very, very careful. I actually happen to have uh, two of these. I've got one here and one here. This one I haven't used, I don't think, or if I have, I haven't used it as much. But, no, you get the idea, and they're a nice, nicely presented knife, actually. The sort of wooden, wooden handle I find very good, and just a nice... You, know, you can see the number there, I don't know if I can get that in focus for you, number six, whatever it is. But uh, Open All Six has Savoir France, France written on it. And so that's the Open All Six knife to make your cuts with. 
So if you're new to grafting or thinking about doing it, what I'll probably be doing is doing, well I will be doing some grafting later in the year, but I like to use this time of year, you know, when you can get a little bit itchy, you know, itchy feet. Don't graft now, won't be successful, or highly unlikely to be successful, but I like to sort of get planning because Planning and preparation as a gardener is incredibly important and uh, you know I've done the rust jobs before and I really try not to do that. Now with regards to tape I like to use this and this is flower arranging tape. Now I've got this off of Amazon. If you type this or Amazon as I should say because uh, when I say Amazon, <laughs> Amazon some of my American viewers don't, uh, they don't get that so Amazon. Right so here we go. This is flower arranging tape and very relatively cheap actually I think I got that off you know I did get that off the internet and what else have we got now this is incredibly important because if you're going to go ahead to graft a variety so let's say for instance you're going to graft a queen cox apple okay you want to remember that it's queen cox apple for the future ideally because generally if you've chose to propagate a particular variety it's because it's a variety that you like or somebody else that you know likes and what you want to do is a very simple idea and to do this you'll need you can use a milk carton you know not a carton but a plastic milk bottle or one that orange juice comes in something like that and what you do with scissors is you just cut out your little thing like that and you'll need a permanent marker to write your variety on and a bit of string through the hole that you've made with your hole punch and then you tie that round so you'd write queen cox on it hang it round and then ideally take a photo as well or whatever and then you hopefully will not remember the will not forget rather the variety that you've grafted so what we're going to do now is just go outside and I'll show you what a graft is for those of you who don't know Okay, so this is apple variety Worcester Pearman. It's a UK variety, and I purchased this tree, this tree a year or so ago from Mail Order Trees. Buy one, get one free. And next to it over there, we won't go into that now, is the Jubilee Plum Tree, which is very good actually. Came good price, buy one, get one free. So let's have a look at this. So you can see here, you've got the tree. Now this is on MM106 rootstock, which is otherwise known as a half standard, so all being well should be a fair sized tree one day. But uh, what generally happens with grafting is they either bud or graft down here. Budding is another form of propagation that I don't have any experience with. But bud or graft down here, so this is, a root, this is the rootstock that controls the overall size of the tree. And so the, you can just see that there, a bud or a graft here. Now, and this is a direct bit of grafting or budding here but look at that so you can see there's been a graft there now this has been done by a professional and is very clean and tidy and I really do like this tree it's done very well put out some nice growth and a nice shape so it can be a way of making trees a nice shape and also you can graft other varieties onto it so here you could say if, you, if it was your thing I wouldn't do it but you could graft another variety onto here and onto here ideally when the tree is a little bit bigger but uh, that indeed could be done so now you know a little bit about uh, why grafting is done and I'll show you some previous projects from before right okay so we're down here now this was a graft I did several years ago and you can see there look that's just where I did the graft now I've got a whole playlist on grafting about uh, methods in which I've, I've done to do it. So check that one out if you want to. But the mistake I made, you can see what it is. What have I done? I didn't write the variety or indeed I've lost the tag with the variety on. So that's a mistake there, so don't do that. But you can see the idea of a, this is a form of cleft graft I did. Now here you can see this was a failure here from where I did a graft. But the tree has put out two little shoots here and I may graft onto here and here two different varieties okay so once again another graft here which was successful but look at that I believe this was winter king great apple variety long keeper spoke about that before lost it again and here as well see that there a successful graft but lost the tag again so my message is don't lose your tag So those ones I showed you, 
I showed you the success of the graph, but I also showed you about the importance of not losing your tags. So if you check out my playlist, you will see on grafting, you will probably see a winter king apple on there. This is a tree I grafted a few years ago, and it's starting now. You know, the last two summers or autumns, whatever, it started to reward with a great crop. So have a look at that one. But grafting, definitely a thing that you want to have a look at as well as taking cuttings of bushes as well. That's going to be another video that I'm going to do. But what you want to do is have a go at it and expect to make a few mistakes. Expect some failures because it will happen. But it's very, excuse me, it's very worth doing and it certainly is worth, you know, persevering with. Because with regards to propagation of varieties of species of apples, um, we need to know how to do it because species could become extinct and probably indeed have. And with regards to produce propagating older varieties of apples which may have more disease resistance, these will be of great value in the future. I mean they're of great value now, but with regards to spraying etc, older varieties will have generally have more disease resistance because they haven't been bred with regards to you know the use of pesticides etc etc so learn about propagating apples and also let's say you've got a tree an apple tree in your back garden that you don't particularly like the the variety that it is or you fancy to try another variety onto it then you may consider grafting and it can also help with pollination as well because you can graft one apple here and one apple here that flower at the same time and assist with cross-pollination. So I think you guys get what I'm saying. Learn about grafting and my scions should be on the way soon from Stephen Hayes himself. Pitmaster, Pitmaster Pineapple, Queen Cox and I believe James Grieve I might have ordered. Something along or say ordered um, I have requested. So yeah, intriguing stuff. Take care. Speak soon.